In 2008, Mike Bickle wrote the book Growing in the Prophetic. It was published by Charisma House, which is owned by Stephen Strang. It is a 256-page book which depicts Bickle as an authority on prophecy. But in 2023, we found out this authority has been giving false prophecies. And these weren't just prophecies that were made in good faith with Bickle honestly believing they were true. They were self-serving prophecies made in bad faith which Bickle deliberately made knowing full well they were false. Soon after a young woman, currently identified as Jane Doe, arrived in Kansas City in 1996, Bickle told her he had a dream about her. After a Sunday service, in front of Bickle's wife Diane, he prophesied she was an Esther. You're not just an Esther, you are going to lead thousands of Esthers. He then prophesied Diane would die and Jane would replace her as his new wife. Jane did not lead thousands of Esthers, Diane did not die, and Jane did not become Mike Bickle's wife. Bickle uttered three false prophecies he knew were false. A person who makes prophecies, knowing they are false, is a false prophet. Mike Bickle is a false prophet. What is the significance of this conclusion? Bickle's credibility has been destroyed. Every single prophecy Bickle ever uttered is now suspect. Any statement of a spiritual experience he ever claimed is no longer credible. Jane said, that line that Diane, his wife, is going to die and that we're going to get married. He at least said that to me 100 times. In his book, Growing in the Prophetic, Bickle wrote, Nowhere in the New Testament is there the suggestion that a Christian should be executed, excommunicated, or even branded a false prophet for simply relaying an inaccurate prophecy. How many false prophecies should anyone make before they are branded a false prophet? The level of this deceit, uttering a false prophecy 100 times, a lifestyle of fraud, obviously justifies Bickle being called a false prophet. Anyone whose dishonesty level is so extreme they can utter 100 prophecies they know are false, could tell you 100 more false prophecies, or 100 fake stories of spiritual experiences they never experienced. Or one story with 100 fake details. Or any number of fake stories or fake details. Because by that point clearly they have just stopped caring. They will say anything they think people will believe. There is literally nothing to stop them. There is no filter. Honesty is determined by such self-governance factors as conscience, fear of God, and fear of consequences. Anyone who lies often, has a seared conscience, no fear of God, and is not scared of consequences. Anyone who lies as often as Bickle did to one person, has no reason to expect anyone to take them seriously on anything they say. Nothing Bickle has ever said that can't be proved should be believed, no prophecies, no visits from angels, no audible voices of God, and no other spiritual experiences. Where did Bickle draw the line on how many deceptions he could tell? Where should you draw the line on how many lies he may have told? In common law, there is a Latin expression, falsus in uno, falsus in omnibus, which means, false in one thing, false in everything. It is the basic legal principle that a witness who lies about one thing is not credible on anything. This is common sense, of course, but there are critics of the principle who argue that there should be some allowance for innocent mistakes, trivial inconsistencies and harmless exaggerations. Applied to Bickle's false prophecies, what was innocent, trivial, or harmless? There is nothing in telling a young woman that his wife was going to die and she would replace him, that was innocent, trivial, or harmless. Everything he said was deliberate, significant and harmful. It is funny that Mike Bickle claimed he wanted a revival or move of God comparable to the one recorded in the book of Acts, when lies told resulted in judgment and death. Ananias and Sapphira lied and died. Ananias gave one false prophecy in the days of Jeremiah, and Jeremiah prophesied God's judgment. Less than a year after Ananias had lied, he died. In Deuteronomy chapter 18, God says, The prophet who speaks a word presumptuously in my name, a word which I have not commanded him to speak, that prophet shall die. In Ezekiel chapter 13, Ezekiel said, Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel who prophesy from their own inspiration, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord God says, Woe to the foolish prophets who are following their own spirit and have seen nothing. 
Did you not see a false vision when you said, The Lord declares, but it is not I who have spoken? Therefore, this is what the Lord God says. Because you have spoken deceit and have seen a lie, therefore behold, I am against you. My hand will be against the prophets who see false visions. Ezekiel chapter 13 verses 1 to 9. Now that we have clearly established that Mike Bickle is a false prophet after many deliberately deceitful and harmful prophecies, the question that must be asked is, when did he become a false prophet? Because you could say, well, I can accept that Reverend Bickle is now a false prophet, and everything he has said since the false prophecy made 100 times isn't reliable, but he may have been a true prophet before he became a false prophet? Maybe he started well, then went astray, and started lying? The testimony of Jane Doe is he made his first false prophecy to her in 1996. But was that the first time he uttered a false prophecy? A woman other than Jane Doe has come forward and said that Bickle, when married and serving as a pastor in her church in Kansas City around 1983, communicated to her a prophecy that someday his wife Diane would die in an earthquake, and then Bickle and this woman could be together. Around 1983 is when Bickle became a false prophet, because the false prophet designation must start after the first false prophecy in a series of false utterances. This takes us back to near the start of Mike Bickle's ministry in Kansas City, because he says that in 1982, God told him, I will change the understanding and expression of Christianity in one generation. This prophecy and everything since then could be a fraud. The credibility of Mike Bickle's entire personal prophetic narrative has collapsed. 